first of all uh, thank you mayur for this uh, great opportunity that you have actually given me in being able to come to a platform like this and be giving a talk along with some of the legendary star wars and endocrine who may be actually uh, what do you say a fan of right from my mbbs times so many of them not mentioning anybody by name but i been a fan of these people right from mbbs times so a very tricky topic that is given to me today a very tricky topic that is non diabetic renal disease in diabetic patients when you think of a diabetic patient automatically what comes to your mind is diabetic renal disease there is no question about it but the truth is this this is the truth end stage renal disease in type 2 diabetes is related to non diabetic kidney disease in nearly 50% of patients which means what you assume as diabetic kidney disease and what in reality is diabetic kidney disease is a very 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 big difference okay so many people are under the assumption that when a diabetic patient comes to me and he is having a creatinine high that is equal to diabetic kidney disease what is there else what else can be there no that is absolutely wrong first and foremost thing to keep in mind is that we always think of diabetic nephropathy as the last diagnosis our first thought process has to be going to a whole lot of other things if nothing actually fits the box that is when we start thinking about diabetic nephropathy so please don't consider that a diabetic patient with renal failure is having diabetic nephropathy first up you think of diabetic nephropathy in a diabetic patient at the end at the end because that is actually a diagnosis if you talk about end stage renal disease due to diabetes then that is a diagnosis wherein what you can offer to the patient is actually speaking very less so that is why please do keep in mind that end stage renal disease and diabetes is related to non diabetic kidney disease so it is non diabetic kidney disease that we will be focusing on here now why this is so important to know you can actually see the natural history of diabetic nephropathy to study it in type 1 diabetes and what you understand is that the rate of fall in gfr over here is quite significant it is very 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 significant so when you tell a patient who is having diabetes with a creatinine 2 that he is having a gfr of maybe around 55 60 and this gfr is going to become end stage that is 15 in a matter of 3 years or 4 years then you literally killing his confidence and more or less he he comes to an understanding himself that he is going to become dialysis dependent in a matter of 4 or 5 years and whatever diabetes you control whatever kind of control you bring into whatever hp events you try and achieve that is not going to prevent him from going into end stage so that nephropathy so when you actually make a diagnosis called diabetic nephropathy and you are cementing on the diagnosis and you are actually disclosing it to the patient then you are in reality giving a very very bad news what is the bad news that you giving because the gfr right now which may be say 55 or 60 in diabetic nephropathy progresses at a rate of 8 to 10 ml per minute per year so the rate of fall in gfr in diabetic nephropathy is 8 to 10 8 to 10 money you will be losing around 50 ml per minute in a matter of 5 years which means if a person has 55 gfr now which will be his approximate gfr if his creatinine is 2 then he will become 15 15 is end stage renal disease he will become 15 in a matter of 4 years which means he will become dialysis dependent in a matter of 4 years and if you become dialysis dependent in a country like india the chances that you cross one year without having a significant illness or without having a significant hospital admission is hardly 30% which means the diabetic nephropathy is never the diagnosis that you are looking for it is your last diagnosis it is a very bad diagnosis too let us accept that and what you can do to the patient is in fact very minimal so when you actually see a diabetic patient you always hope for and you always seek for whether this patient is having something else and that is the most important part of it that is the most important thing that i want you to be knowing so when a patient with diabetes has diabetic nephropathy let us just look into it when a patient with diabetes has diabetic nephropathy invariably it goes without saying that it all starts off with glomerular hyperfiltration so hyperfiltration is the first thing intraglomerular hypertension because of glomerular hyperfiltration is what that actually is the starting point of diabetic nephropathy so there is no diabetic nephropathy in the world without proteinuria so proteinuria is the most important thing symptoms relating to proteinuria are very very important which means that the patient definitely does explain to you about frothing of urine so asking the patient in detail about how frothy the urine is and how long this been happening like that and the patient's urine routine analysis which has to show albuminuria so there is no way in the world that you cannot think you can think of diabetes or diabetic nephropathy without proteinuria so proteinuria goes hand in hand as in when there is a disease to the glomerulus the tubules will start to compensate SGLT2 inhibitors are well activated in diabetes. You'll be having sudden more retention. You'll be having glucose uptake. Invariably, that will lead to intravascular overload. That will sweep out. So you'll be having extravascular overload. There is always edema. Edema goes without saying. So edema, proteinuria are two things which are almost always there. Diabetic retinopathy is one other thing which is about 100% in accordance with type one. 
65 in type 2. And then, of course, hypertension. So the four essential hallmarks which you should be thinking about when you think of diabetes with diabetic nephropathy are edema, proteinuria, hypertension, retinopathy. If in case you feel that something on this line is not fitting or this is slightly odd, slightly odd, that is when you have to be gearing up and looking off a non-diabetic causes. You start seeing these non-diabetic causes. You can see, see these are all basically non-diabetic causes. List of non-diabetic, non-diabetic kidney diseases you can actually see. Non-diabetic kidney diseases starting from ischemic nephropathy, embolism, you can actually see glomerular diseases, polycystic kidney disease, reflux, etc. Et it is not possible to actually remember it this way. What we understand is very, very basic. What I understand first and foremost is that if there is absence of retinopathy, 65% concordance in type 2, 100% concordance in type 1. But if there is absence of retinopathy, please, please take it very seriously. Straight go ahead and do a biopsy. There is no point in thinking about it. Proteinuria was always hand in hand with diabetes. But the moment you are having anything other than proteins in urine, you are having very active sediments, you're having RBCs in urine, please, that never happens in diabetic nephropathy. It is a 100% indication for biopsy. When you're having a very significant worsening of proteinuria, proteinuria that is disproportionate to the degree of renal failure, proteinuria that is disproportionate to the duration of diabetes, that once again is an indication to go for biopsy. And rapid decline in renal function without significant proteinuria. The moment you don't have proteinuria, again, you're thinking something other than diabetes. And again, after starting ACE inhibitors or ARB, if there is a fall in GFR, again, you're thinking of something other than diabetic nephropathy. So all these things you basically know when you're seeing a patient with diabetes, that these are the chances that it could not be, it cannot be diabetic nephropathy. So let me just try and see what else is possible. The three compartments in the kidney that you have are the vascular, the glomerular, and the tubular interstitial. So there are three compartments. Diabetic nephropathy is a proper glomerular disease. It's a proper glomerular disease. So a person with diabetes can have a kidney disease other than diabetic nephropathy due to involvement of the vascular compartment, due to involvement of the glomerulus, due to involvement of the tubular interstitial compartment. What can he have as an involvement of the vascular compartment? Vascular compartment, he can very easily have what is called ischemic nephropathy. So ischemic nephropathy patient can also present in ischemic nephropathy, I mean renal artery stenosis. Renal artery stenosis end stage is called ischemic nephropathy. So a patient with renal artery stenosis can also present to you just like how a diabetic patient presents to you with kidney disease. So that is why it's very important for you to know whether it is a vascular disease predominating. When you see the patient look for proteinuria, significant proteinuria doesn't happen in vascular disease. Disproportionate hypertension happens in vascular disease. History of POVD, smoking, coronary artery disease, all these things are favoring vascular disease. When you see a lean patient, slim patient with very little edema, who has got renal artery stenosis kind of features with CAD, proteinuria, nil edema, very little proteinuria and actually has got something like a brewery or even having other features at the state of multiple vessel involvement. In all that points, the ischemic nephropathy. Ischemic nephropathy is one condition wherein you shouldn't be actually giving ACE inhibitors ARBs because that can worsen your GFR. So the first compartment that has to come to your mind is vascular. Can a diabetic patient have a tubular interstitial disease? A diabetic patient having a chronic tubular interstitial disease is very unlikely, but a diabetic patient can have an acute tubular interstitial disease or an AKI, which is due to involvement of the tubule, primarily because you can make it happen. You can make it happen by giving drugs. You can make it happen by giving contrast. It can happen in the context of sepsis. So every time a patient is having a worsening of GFR, you always think of ATIN or what we call acute tubular interstitial nephritis. Acute tubular interstitial nephritis very, very commonly happens when you give something from outside. That's a drug. Any drug that can worsen AKI, any contrast that you give or very importantly sepsis. And these patients can have infections due to hundreds of reasons. They may be having a cellulitis, they may be having a UTI, they may be having something like a pneumonia. All these things can actually worsen. So please be careful about that. In a tubular interstitial environment, there will not be edema. In a tubular interstitial environment, there will not be significant proteinuria. In a tubular interstitial environment, there will be no RBCs in urine. So when you're seeing a patient who has got a very rapid worsening, with no significant edema, no proteinuria, having no RBCs in urine, you are basically thinking of a tubular interstitial environment. And tubular interstitial environment more or less has a reversible cause. So please do keep that in mind. And a million dollar point that we have to always keep in mind is that these are elderly patients. They can have myeloma. And myeloma is no more a disease of the elderly. It's a disease which you can see from 40, 45 years onwards. So when you see a diabetic patient who has disproportionate proteinuria, but that is not albumin. That's why doing 24-hour protein is very important. The moment you are having 24-hour protein value very high, but your urine routine is not showing so much of albuminuria, that means it is something else. And that something else is very often light change in urine. So please keep in mind that diabetic patient, anemia, high ESR, don't keep high thresholds, keep a very low threshold for testing out for 
multiple myeloma. Myeloma and amyloidosis are very common. The more you see proteinuria, especially in myeloma, which is not albumin, that's a big chance. Anemia, high ESR, urine albumin not significant, but 24 or urine albumin with 24 or urine protein high means always, always keep in mind myeloma. Please go ahead and do a biopsy. So that's also extremely important to keep in mind. That is about the tubular interstitial compartment. When you come to the glomerular compartment, glomerular compartment meaning mostly it's diabetic nephropathy itself. But can you have a glomerular disease other than diabetes? Yes, you can have a glomerular disease other than diabetes when the patient presents with nephrotic syndrome. See, very, very wrongly we are taught that diabetes produces nephrotic syndrome. No, diabetes produces nephrotic proteinuria. Nephrotic proteinuria and nephrotic syndrome are two different things. You, have, you can get nephrotic proteinuria and need not syndrome, need not necessarily syndrome which means nephrotic proteinuria with hypoalbuminemia with edema and hyperlipidemia is called nephrotic syndrome. Diabetic patients don't get nephrotic syndrome. You check the serum albumin levels, they're going to be normal. They get nephrotic branch proteinuria. So the moment you have a diabetic patient with nephrotic syndrome, that means that the syndrome is due to some other cause, we have to do a biopsy. Okay, so actually speaking, these are the list of things that you can see over here. Macroscopic hematuria means there is something else in the glomerulus. Acute renal failure, look out for the cause. Nephrotic syndrome, always look out for the cause. Very rapidly progressive renal failure, look out for the cause, especially it's going to be an infection. Progressive proteinuria, disproportionate, again, look out for. RBC, WBC, cause, look out for. Renal disease, less than five years, again, look out for. And the most important things that I want to tell you is diabetic nephropathy is the most common cause of nephrotic branch proteinuria without syndrome. It seldom presents a syndrome. It doesn't really present a syndrome. Elderly with renal failure disproportionate to albuminuria should always raise a suspicion of a plasma cell dyspraxia. Smoker with POVD plus CAD having minimal proteinuria plus edema is never diabetic kidney disease. It is very often a vascular disease. It is very often renal artery stenosis. Autoimmune diseases in the background of diabetes in a young female to be never missed. So anything and everything can be SLD. It's not mandatory that the girl need to be having only SLD. We're seeing a lot of patients with polyglant and autoimmune syndromes who do have type 1 diabetes alongside. And on top of it, they may be having so many manifestations. One manifestation among that can be an autoimmune disease, which may be anything like SLD. So that also to be kept in mind. So when you see a patient with renal failure from today, please try to localize the compartment first. Okay. Patient having significant proteinuria, edema, RBC is glomerulus. If that is not there, it is vascular tubular interstitial. Vascular will have hypertension. Tubular interstitial will not have hypertension. So if you know this much, you can come to the compartment. If you think it is vascular, then it is never a diabetic nephropathy. It is likely to be RAS, ischemic nephropathy, do dope blood and go for angio if required. If it is tubular interstitial, it is acquired, acute, and the most important acute causes to be kept in mind are drugs, infection, contrast, and myeloma. If you come to glomerulus, in the glomerulus, mostly it is diabetic nephropathy. But if you are having macroscopic hematuria, then it is not diabetic nephropathy. If you are having nephrotic syndrome, then it is not diabetic nephropathy. For every case of nephrotic syndrome and macroscopic hematuria, please do a biopsy. Okay, so this is basically the take home that I want to tell you. And once again, emphasizing on the fact that to make a diagnosis of diabetic kidney disease, anybody, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can do. But to come out with a diagnosis that it is not a diabetic kidney disease is where I think we should be showing our talent. So these are all the drugs which somebody else will be actually talking about. This is what we have with us in our armamentarium. But as such, the diagnosis part is what I have dealt with. Thank you. And once again, thank you, Mayur, for this great opportunity to share space with some of the legends in this field of enterprise. Thank you.